Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant, powered by Come On Now, the podcast. I'm your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomont. I have another rant for you today. Before we jump in, thank you so much for your continued support of our channel as we continue to grow and get closer and closer to 5,000 subscribers. Let's just jump on in the topic. Chicago Sky had an interesting end of season post game press conference following their final loss of the year and you heard some commentary by Dana Evans and Isabel Harrison talking about the attacks they have felt from their own fans let's repeat that their own fans which we can probably say are more than likely Angel Reese's fans. Not Caitlin Clark's fans, as Angel Reese so eloquently verbalized on her podcast a couple of weeks ago. But the attacks are coming from Angel Reese fans. And I'm going to go out on the limb and I'm going to say those are Angel Reese fans. Because the Chicago Sky didn't really have fans a couple of years ago. They had a few fans, but now all of a sudden these players are being attacked via social media with all kinds of stuff being said about them. But let's take a listen to what Dana Evans and Isabel Harrison said after their final game this past week. Uh, obviously battling through what we went through this season with injuries and it wasn't fair to anybody for what we went through and um, just being better the next time you step on the court and just addressing uh, things you could have done better to bring, you know, in the following year. Lena, yeah, how would you summarize this year? <laughs> um, a roller coaster, just like for- The team and the yourself. Team. I mean, both, honestly. For me personally, it was a roller coaster ride. I mean, I went from starting to playing to not getting in the game. so. It's, it's hard, right? Let's remember, Dana Evans demanded a trade. And then after she demanded a trade, she got benched. Why do, you, why do you think she demanded a trade? Because the environment in Chicago is utterly toxic. The environment in that franchise was an absolute nightmare for these players to deal with. These players were themselves. These players played how they typically play. If you look at Dana Evans's numbers, they're pretty much the same numbers that she's had her entire career, only this time her numbers are magnified because she's playing with Angel Reese. Which is why I know that the fans are Angel Reese fans, not Chicago Sky fans. Because if she wasn't receiving the type of backlash that she's gotten this year from those Chicago Sky fans, then it has to be the new fans of the Chicago Sky, which are Angel Reese fans. But then she got more time because players were getting hurt, dropping like flies. <clears throat> Kennedy Carter misses some games. So you have to play her some more. Isabel Harrison's numbers were not as good as they were in past seasons, but she didn't even play last year. She had knee surgery. So her numbers go back to 22 when she was playing for Dallas, which one can imagine was a different situation. But let's continue. And it's just like, you just got to be better, I guess. Um, come back 10 times better and even harder and, ready to, to compete again next year. Um, and for the team, I feel like we went through so much. I mean, injury after injury, uh, people getting sick. Uh, that's no excuse, uh, but it was it was hard. It was, a, it was a rough season just all around, just with the health and everything like that. It was a lot of stuff that we could even focus on basketball. Like we were taking, we were having to take care of stuff outside of basketball, which is a big distraction. This league is way too good. If you're not focusing on the what are the things and what are the distractions outside of basketball? One can imagine. One can imagine that those things have nothing to do with any of these players. 
one can imagine that the distractions outside of basketball are all primarily result, revol revolving around her, their newfound attention seeker, Angel Reese. Around Angel Reese, who is the focus of everything. And who knows what else, what other drama that Angel Reese brought to this team. Lord knows Reese has a history of drama. She had the drama at LSU. She now has publicly admitted she doesn't talk to Flage Johnson pretty much. Flage Johnson has pretty much said the exact same thing, that she doesn't talk to Angel Reese. These are two women that at the end of March, Flage was giving this lengthy speech about Angel Reese and she's her sister and da-da-da-da-da. But we all know what happened earlier in the season when they were at war. Their, their mothers were battling on, on social media. You have a team that inherited a culture of me person over a culture of we. I use that terminology a lot now in college football. <clears throat> I talk about the culture of me over the culture of we. And you see the difference when it comes to certain players. Culture of me, I need the ball. Culture of me, I have a double-double streak. Culture of me, you're down 14 and you're sprinting to the block to catch the pass so you can continue a streak. Culture of me, you're up seven. You sprint down to the block to catch a pass to score. Culture of me, swing back out to the wing, demand the ball, and then walk off pouting because you didn't extend your double-double streak. That is a culture of me. That is not a culture of we. It's not a culture of winning. She was more upset that game, Angel Reese was, of not continuing her double-double streak than she was that the fact that they got their butt kicked by 14 by the New York Liberty. And that is what I continue to continually harp on is, a, is that type of culture. And that culture was also pushed by Teresa Weatherspoon, the coach. I thought she would be able to manage it. I thought that she would, <laughs> with her background, would have – not allow that to seep in. I thought she did an overall really good job with Kennedy Carter to get Kennedy Carter to a level that we know who Kennedy Carter is and we know how good of a player she is. But even with her, you could see that things were starting to fall apart. And then she has an illness that we really don't know. She's out for some games. And then she's back. And then she's out again at the end of the year. Who knows? But I feel bad for these women because they didn't ask for this. They didn't ask to, 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 to deal with this. They want to hoop. But you have a select. It's funny how this, the, you know, we'll get to it more. But let's play some more of this video. The main thing, you're not going to win many games in this league. This is your first time being part of this guy not making the postseason. I'm curious, like, what the lesson you're now seeing is in that. Maybe it's too early to, to say what that is, but... As far as? As far as um, the takeaway. I mean, you were part of teams, again, that, that mm -hmm. made the postseason, maybe not playing as much, but, but you're still in it. You're mm -hmm. really gaining experience and those lessons there. Now you're not. I'm curious yeah. what, what the takeaway for you is now. Um... I mean, I feel like the takeaway is to be, just be better. I feel like all around, um, I don't, personally, I don't know. I don't, I don't know, truly. I, I don't. It was, it was a lot this year. So I don't, I don't really know what the takeaway was, truly. She's gone. <laughs> she won't be back. Let's, let's, let's be real with us. Let's be real with ourselves. I don't think either of these players will be back with the Chicago Sky next year. I don't think they want to be back. I know that in their in their minds, they know that Angel Reese isn't going anywhere. And it takes a special kind of person to deal with the circus show that surrounds her. With the attitude that she brings. With the me first mentality that she brings. Yeah, she calls herself a dog. And I'll do whatever I got to do for my team, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, and until, until you decide that you're going to drop a podcast with seven games left in the season in the middle of a playoff run. 
until that podcast is basically a vent session about Caitlin Clark and how everyone is attacking you and everyone's making you feel a certain way and everyone's doing this, that, and the other to you. Not recognizing that you play a part in what happens to you. Every action has a reaction. Every action has a consequence. If you do something, there's a consequence to that. If you do something, there's a reaction to that. When you decide, I'm going to start a podcast with seven games left in the season, or eight, whatever it was, and I'm going to do it during the season, midweek, Thursday, I'm going to record, or Wednesday, I'm going to record. Doesn't matter if we got practice or if we got whatever. Doesn't matter that I can't make a layup. Doesn't matter that I shoot 35% from the field. Doesn't matter that we've lost and lost and lost and lost. I'm more focused about me. I, I, I'm not begrudging someone for getting sp- endorsement deals. I'm not begrudging Reese's Pieces, Reebok, whatever endorsement deal she gets. That's a, that's that's something that she's earned, <clears throat> and she deserves what she's earned. But a podcast is an extracurricular activity that probably would not be the best idea while your team is scuffling and falling apart down the stretch of your rookie season. It's probably a better idea if you're going to do a podcast to do that after the season's over with. And then on top of that, you make the entire first episode a rant session and a moan session about things that have been done to you look at your teammates right now your fans did this to your teammates this are these isn't caitlin clark fans caitlin clark fans don't care about dana evans and isabel harrison i don't know what you could possibly say negatively about isabel harrison i don't know what dana evans i'm not as familiar with but i know she demanded a trade because she wanted that out of that toxic pit She didn't get it, and then she immediately got benched. Whereas Isabel Harrison's first game after Angel Reese departed was a fabulous game. Mind you, she didn't have a game like that after that game. Don't know if it's her fault or if it was the fact that she is who she is, and just because she had a good game doesn't mean you start making her the focal point of the offense. Doesn't I mean, maybe it's also in part because Camila Cardoso bowed out the last few games as well and with, with injury, I, I presume. But every action has a reaction. Every action has a consequence. And you have players that are being demeaned by largely Angel Reese fans because they weren't being demeaned last year by the Chicago Sky fans. Being honest. What was the what was the outside of basketball stuff you referenced you were um I would just say a lot of noise. I feel like um now we're more prepared. I feel like overall in the for the WNBA, like we had more eyes, we had more attention, we had a lot of stuff going on that we weren't all used to, right? So it was new for everybody, not just us, but I was just speaking obviously for us that it was just a lot of outside noise where now I feel like we're used to that. We know how to handle that. We don't want to cause anything to um, distract us. We don't need any distractions on top of just not causing stuff in the locker room. I feel like sometimes um, you can read tweets and you can read stuff and that can affect people in the locker room and Mm -hmm. just keeping that out, you know, just making sure we stay together as a whole and we know we got each other's back and just staying together. I feel like, uh, was a lesson for this whole league this year. Let's talk about that for a second. How did the WNBA prepare these ladies for what they had to know was coming? 18.6 million people watched the Women's National Championship game last year, this past year, in April, featuring Caitlin Clark. What did they expect? Genuinely speaking, what did they expect? 
their lack of social media and media training in general when it comes to the WNBA is substandard to utter complete trash. They don't know how to answer questions. They don't know how to react to social media posts. They don't know how to react to being tagged on things. They don't know how to react. Women are naturally emotional beings, far more emotional than men. Men take it on the chin and deal with it on a daily basis. Can you imagine what LeBron James sees on a daily basis on stuff that he is tagged in or attached to or said about? Just off of the stuff with Bronny James. Heck, I've said stuff about him on Bronny James. I have my opinions on LeBron James. He deals with stuff on a level that no one can possibly fathom on a daily basis for the last 20 years. And they have gotten a taste of it for the last four months and has broken them emotionally and mentally. That is something that the WNBA has to work on with these women to understand. Number one, you don't have to get tagged on posts on social media. You know that. You can reject tags on posts. So those posts that you that, that are going to come, that are negative about you, you don't necessarily ever have to see because you can reject being tagged. That's basic. You don't want to see posts about you that are negative? Remove tagging ability from anyone to tag you. But let's continue. Both of you can speak to this. That's an interesting thing. I don't think it's something I've quite heard a player articulate Mm -hmm. this year. With all the, the new attention Maybe that's not the right way to put it, but no, I get what you're saying. How, how did you ex- how did you guys experience that? What was the sort of content of it? Like mm-hmm. what was the feeling like? What were you reading, seeing, hearing? I mean, I'm gonna be honest, it was tough. I mean, Izzy, I know you can attest to that too. Yeah. It was it was really tough. I mean, um, we're professionals, we know that we can play this game. I mean, but when you got people that's steady bashing you that's supposed Every to be game. our supporters, I feel like that was that was a little slap. That's where you find out the truth. Our supporters, they weren't being bashed by their supporters last year. So their supporters are not really their supporters. Their supporters are Angel Reese supporters who want this team to win so badly because they want Angel Reese to be viewed as the hero. Despite the fact that she's not the hero, she's the reason they were primarily bad because of how they played around her. Look, end of the season was a wash. I thought they played better in certain circumstances without her in those last few games. Yeah, they got blown out in a couple. And then, you look, the last game, they're missing five players. It's not like you're missing one player. You're missing five players. It's one thing if you're just missing Angel Reese. But when you're missing five players and you're missing Kennedy Carter and you're missing Cardoso, I mean, look, you don't have much of a shot because you're missing now not just one start, one starter but you're missing three. You're missing your best scorer. You're missing your big post presence. So you're missing a whole lot more. So after that first game, I think the next game they got blasted, but then they had a game they lost by five. So overall, we never really got to see them without her with a roster that was full without Reese. But these fans that are blasting them are not Chicago Sky fans. They're Angel Reese fans the face and that was that was hard to kind of deal with but it was disgusting I, it was really disgusting but I always say God does not make mistakes mm-hmm. and I feel like this this season really challenged men, my mental to another level and I feel like I'm going to be so much better next season just mentally um, prepared for everything and I know Izzy you yeah. kind of feel that way too I experienced um, I've never experienced this amount of hate hate and harassment Mm -hmm. this entire season i get emotional about it because i know dana went through the same but it's it's hard because it should have never been like that and to go and just want to play basketball every day and you have people constantly and if it's online it's online but like you now get tagged in it and i'm constantly having to block people and just people making narratives up about you it's hurtful it is and it's hard to just focus I don't know what narratives are being made up about Isabel Harrison. Um, I don't. I'm not going to dispute what she's saying or discredit what she's saying. 
because she seems like a genuinely jovial person um, from things I've seen on her with social media. So it's, it's, it's sad that she would go through that. But again, this is social media training 101. If you don't want to see negative stuff, don't look. Don't watch. Un make tagging yourself unavailable to people. If that's what's done, then you won't see it unless you start searching your name directly. But other than that, <clears throat> you can you can find ways to avoid that. And I think it's rather intriguing to listen, interesting, intriguing, interesting listen to this stuff because. The narrative that's been pushed is that Caitlin Clark's fans are the ones that are attacking Angel Reese. They're following her home. They're sexualizing her. They're creating AI photos of her. They're doing this to her. They're doing that to her. It's all Caitlin Clark fans. Caitlin Clark fans are the racist pieces of you know what. And Angel Reese's fans are sweet, lo loving human beings. But these women are telling you these are not, these are Chicago fans. But they're not. They're Angel Reese fans. Focus on basketball, and I appreciate the new eyes. But if it comes with hate and bigotry and racism, and even people that look like me bashing you, you can keep it yeah. keep it offline because it's so hurtful, and you don't know how that affects people. So, even people who look like me, she's talking about black folks. Black folks are shredding her. That's what she just said. I don't know what racial and great races and bigotry she's received from whoever, because I mean, I'm not going to dismiss her as a player, but she's rather insignificant in the scope in the grand scope of things as a player. She's never been a full-time full, like a full-time full-time starter in the league. Not that I've seen. I mean, she starts a few games here and there. I mean, she's never had a season where she was a outside of, I can't. Okay. I take that back. In 17 and 18, she was a starter primarily. 29 starts, 33 starts. Outside of that, 11 starts in 13. I guess that's COVID year. Um, five starts, 18 starts, five starts. Like So she's a start, not start player. She's a primarily comes off the bench, especially now. She's gone through some stuff in her career. I mean, blown ACL, autoimmune illness, knee surgery. That's three seasons that she's lost in her career. But in the grand scope of things, she's rather in, and she's not a significant piece. When I talk about like, why would people be attacking her? She is a bench player, which is why I, I there's no way in the world in my belief that Caitlin Clark fans are going after her. Can I believe that some Caitlin Clark fans go after Angel Reese, like next level inappropriately? Absolutely. Do I also know for a fact that Angel Reese fans go after Caitlin Clark directly? Yeah, I've seen it on our boards. Like, it's some nasty shit. It's some nasty, nasty stuff. So, I believe that there are Angel Reese fans that are irritated with the play of Chicago Sky players, and they blame them. For why Angel Reese will not be the rookie of the year. They won't blame Angel Reese for that inability to win that award because she can't make a layup. I think that's just something that a lot of new fans need to be mindful of. And we don't want that to carry into the locker room. And exactly. I'll, and to piggyback on that is I must say, um, especially for the people that support the sky, if you're going to support the sky, support the sky. You know what I'm saying? I feel like that was a big issue and like i mean it messes with your mental i don't like yeah. i don't care how good you are or what's going on you're gonna see stuff you're gonna read stuff but this it, it makes you it made you a lot better it, was it, it made us a lot stronger up here and that's gonna we'll be better next you, year. you learn from it you grow from it. you just stay away from it because it's like i'm not going to attach that to my name but there was just so many times that that was just a factor and it shouldn't have been and it's just disappointing that that was that was the case. What do you put that down to? Where is it coming from? Where is it originating, and why? The internet is the, the internet, and honestly, like she was saying, a lot of our fans were doing that, and it's yeah. it's hard because you just try to stay away from it. And Spoon attested to it so much. Just get off of it, get off of it, and even when you're off it, it still happens. So mm -hmm. there's times I wouldn't even look at my social media, and that's just such a 
crazy place to be because I get so much support from it as well. But when there's so much negativity, you have a job to do, obviously you stay off of it. And it's just like people just run and go with narratives and it's just so detrimental to a team's success. You just have to block it out and like you said, continue to do a job when it's hard, when it's like every single day. I need to stop right there. You're a professional athlete. You're a professional athlete. And in the world of professional sports, it seems that the women in the WNBA, they want the praise. They don't want the criticism. And I think that can be said for every athlete under the sun. You want the praise. You don't want the criticism. But you don't see NFL players, NBA players, NHL players, baseball players. You don't see that criticism envelop them to the point where they are incapable of competing. Now, I mean, you I guess you have seen it with Ben Simmons in the NBA that he's basically become someone who doesn't even play the position that he was drafted to play because he's so afraid to do certain things because he just fit he's so mentally shot. Now, if you're that guy, if Ben Simmons wasn't making the money he's making, he would be out of the league right now. They don't want to have dead money on their book. So he's been dumped around, traded around, and, and at the end of his contract, if he manages to stay in the league, it'll be on a league veteran minimum because the, the player that he was first with Philadelphia, he's not that guy anymore. When he passed up that dunk around the rim, and essentially potentially cost the Sixers a series. He's he's no longer he, he mentally he was shot he was toast, but most NBA players, most professional sports professional athletes who are males, they don't fold like this under these situations. You're seeing this as the first year of actual people paying attention to the WNBA. And whether or not Angel Reese's fans are the ones doing it or not, and I do believe that they are the ones that are doing it. <clears throat> um, you can't you can't let that crap break you or get get to you. Remember, you're the professional athlete. The people that are on Twitter, on Instagram, on YouTube, we're not. Who cares what we think? If you care what we think. Damn, we have a little bit too much power over you. And I include we as in myself as a member of, of, of YouTube and, and, and have a podcast. I shouldn't have that type of power over your mental, your, your mental being. Now you can there might be 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 more podcasts that say exactly what I say, but we shouldn't have that ability to impact you the way that it seems like it impacts at least Isabel Harris. And that's something that needs to be worked on because if you can't handle this, then you're probably not going to be in the league much longer on any team. It's just it's just the way of the world. You have to deal with this. You have to be able to play and not worry about it. Like, do you watch? Aaron Judge is hitting. I'm bringing this up for a reason. Aaron Judge right now for the New York Yankees is hitting 319 with 53 homers, 136 RBI, 114 runs, 126 walks. He leads the league in damn near every major statistical category until the other day when Shohei Otani passed him in total basis simply because he had a big day. But outside of that, outside of that, He's walked the most in the league. He's, I mean, he's, he, they avoid him at all costs. But outside of that, Aaron Judge has been booed in Yankee Stadium. Flat booed. In April, he was getting booed in his stadium because he was going through a very tough drought and a very bad slump. Aaron Judge is far greater the athlete in his sport than either the, than either of these women are in theirs, probably than any athlete is in the WNBA. And he got booed in Yankee Stadium. 
Yes, New York fans are different. Tua Tagovailoa has been booed in the Hard Rock in Miami. Football players, basketball players in the NBA get booed by their home fans constantly for bad performance. They get eviscerated by their local media. And you're sitting here and you're having this first year of attention, which is still nowhere near the attention that it could turn into, and you have this reaction, you need to toughen up a little bit. And I understand that she wasn't prepared for it, but you have to toughen up a little bit because superstar athletes get absolutely eviscerated by media, by fans. It happens. And if you can't handle it, then maybe you're not cut out to be in the league much longer. A lot of people say, like, oh, this is the cost of, of being reaching the same level as, like, the NDA, let's say, as, as like, your counterparts. But I think what doesn't get factored in is the level of harassment, like, women receive is very different. Yes, yeah, mm-hmm. especially mm-hmm. black Absolutely. women. Absolutely. Especially black guys, women. Yeah, if you guys can speak to that difference. It's- I'm going to jump in before I even listen to this part, because when you jump to especially black women, the league is 90% black. Come on. Especially black women, the type of harassment. Have you seen the shit said about Caitlin Clark this year? She's not black. But this league is primarily black. So you're comparing yourself to yourself? I've literally listened to players on her team say that Caitlin Clark, all she can do is shoot. That was said by Kennedy Carter. How that look? How does that look now? I listened to Angel Reese say, "Well, she's not. You know, there's there's just more than one person that's that's making an impact on the league. That's a direct shot at Caitlin Clark. Your own pl- team flagrantly fouled her four times this season." Your team led the league in flagrant fouls, or did as of a week, a couple weeks ago. And 80% of your flagrant fouls are on one player. So the harassment you're getting, I mean, you just blamed your own fans. You just said it was your own fans. So tell me exactly what the harass. I want to hear what the harassment is. Is it of sexual nature? I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But the, to sit here and say that, especially black players, I mean, in a league that's almost completely black, I want to take a check for a second real quick on something. It's just never allowed. I don't care. So I'm sorry. Let me jump back in. I said 90%. It's probably about 70 75% after I did my, my, my review on these rosters. Probably in that 70 75 maybe 80% range. That's still a large contingent, and most of the white players they don't play a whole lot. You know, if you look if you look at the All Star team, it, you know, the WNBA All Star team, it, you can you can get an idea of who actually plays, and it's not the white women, for the most part. It just isn't. I'm not going to sit here and and make up a story and, and tell you that I can look at their box score, Caitlin Clark. Is the only white woman on the on the team WNBA? Diana Taurasi, Brianna Stewart, and Sabrina are the only white women on Team USA. So you have twenty two player, twenty four players, and four of them are not black. That tells you what you need to know. Four divided by that is eighty two percent of the players are black. I'm not making this a racial thing, but she did. She made it a racial thing, about, especially those who are black. Tell me more. What we're doing, and we had an incident with, obviously, with Kathy, and she had to address, like, the racial tones that was coming this season. I don't care what we do. It's never okay to spew hate and bigotry and just hate towards players, no matter if it's social media or in person. With all respect, Isabel, there are M- WNBA players that have been spewing hate towards Caitlin Clark all season. Players. Forget about the fans. Forget about the, 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 the peanut gallery. We're talking about actual players in the league, including teammates of yours, 
who have spewed that type of rhetoric, who have taken physical pot shots at a player, and your teammates are not the only ones. Dijon Carrington has done it multiple times for the Connecticut Sun. Diana Taurasi had her commentary about it. Becky Hammond has had her commentary about it. Asia Wilson has had her commentary about it. Cheryl Reeve had made her commentary about it. These are coaches and players in the league. Heck, her own coach, Christy Sides, was darn near sabotaging her for half the season. You go down the list, there are, there's player after player after player who has taken a pot shot at Caitlin Clark. And you're talking about what Kathy Engelbert now? I don't even remember. I don't even really know what Kathy Engelbert said because I didn't, I saw briefly. I don't really know what it's about. I don't really care. But a lot of the attacks started internally from coaches and players because I have not seen one coach or one player attack Angel Reese verbally or physically attack her. She got fouled one time hard by a Maryland, former Maryland player, Alyssa Thomas. She's not been pot shotted or verbally pot shotted by people in the league, by coaches in the league. But Caitlin Clark has over and over and over again. It's not remotely the same. Because it's just it's just detrimental and it's it's hard for people's mental health and it's just a lot to control. Yeah. It was took a toll. I feel like that, I feel like that took a toll on our team. Um, just, it, I mean, and I feel like we tried our best to like, not let that shake us, but you're reading stuff and people say, you don't pass this, you don't do that. So people, you're thinking that regardless of if, if you don't want to, like regardless. And I feel like that just, it just didn't, it didn't help our team. I mean, and not, and, and also that we were a young team that didn't help um, but like I said, I feel like this is a lesson and I feel like this is something that's going to grow. We're going to grow from this. Um, we, we come out better yeah. regardless. Mentally, you're going to be better. You're not going to let those things get to you. But, um, I mean, I wish I could say, stop doing it. And we don't want it to happen, but they, they will, but it's just something we learn from. And as a league, like I said, this is the first year where it was like this with everybody. Like yeah. it was a lot of, a lot of hate, but. We'll be better from it. That's all I'll say. Any last questions for players? Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. My final thoughts on this are the w is the WNBA has to help these women with social media training, media training in general, and how to handle negative feedback. Because a large part of the feedback you're going to get as a player is negative. You're going to you're you're. It's just no different than when you go to a restaurant and the service is not great. And you will write a, re a review on that restaurant almost immediately. Heck, you might be writing it while you're sitting at the table. But if the restaurant gives you outstanding service, outstanding food, outstanding, 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 you're not as quick to write that same review saying how amazing it is. It's just how people are emotionally. When they're emotional, emotional usually equals to upset. And when you're upset, you voice things a whole lot more than when you're happy that you voice things. I've never heard of, I, I, you rarely see a person go bananas of how amazing something is. These, all these hot take shows that you watch on TV, first take, they're never praising shows. They're critical shows. They criticize. Mad Dog Russo does his five things, that three things that drive him mad. That's not a positive piece. It's a critical piece. Heck, a lot of the videos that we do are critical pieces. Because the reality is most of you don't want to listen to stuff that just praises people pop all the time. It's boring. It's not interesting. I can only say so much about how amazing LeBron James is. One can only say so many things about how amazing Patrick Mahomes is. But let me say one negative thing about Patrick Mahomes and say, man, I don't like the way his voice sounds. And Kansas City Chiefs fans are going to go bananas. I know this because it's happened. So it's people respond to negative a whole lot more than they respond to positive. Psychologically. I mean, 
I wish we could all live in this world where we're all kumbaya, happy, happy, joy, joy, and all that stuff. But the fact of the matter is, these players have been attacked by their own fans, Angel Reese's fans. For what the Angel Reese's fans are pissed off that Angel Reese is not going to win Rookie of the Year because the reality is Angel Reese wasn't fucking good enough. She wasn't, she wasn't good enough. But that's my, those are my thoughts. Love to hear what you have to say about this video. Leave your thoughts and comments. Like, subscribe, follow, ring that bell. Click the all updates so you get every update up to the minute. Thank you for watching. Come on now.